Hi everybody, this is Mr. C from Astronomy 4 Section 5 and in this first video today I'd like to show you a really cool program called Stellarium. The other day in class on Thursday I mentioned that there's software you can use at home and which you can download for free to simulate a lot of the same things that we do in our planetarium at school. So for this first video I want to try to show you some of the basic controls that go with this program called Stellarium. And as you can see from the way I'm moving the sky around, it's a little bit like looking at the sky in our planetarium dome, but it's kind of like having a little planetarium right on your desk. First thing I want to do is show you how to get this software. So I'm going to switch over to my browser window and show you the website where you can get Stellarium. This is a free program. It's available for free download, and you just have to go to stellarium.org. That'll take you straight to this first page, which has download links over here in the upper right. Uh, they make this program for Windows, Mac OS X, and Linux. There's also a nice user's guide online. You can download that PDF, and it'll give you a real nice guide to how Stellarium works. You can really learn a lot of details that way. Okay, so let's go back to Stellarium and look at some of the basic controls. In the next videos, I'll get into some of the more advanced controls and show you how you can use it to do the same kinds of things we were doing in class to learn about the celestial sphere. We'll probably use this several other times as the quarter goes on. Here's the most basic stuff to know. I've got Stellarium installed and running, and first I want to show you how to look around in different parts of the sky like I'm doing now. You can probably just about guess. What I'm doing here is I'm taking the left button on my mouse, holding it down, and dragging. So this is just one of those click and drag type of operations. We're just doing click and drag and we're able to move the sky around. You can see that we've got the earth down here, we've got sky above, and I've turned on these compass points like I did in the dome the other day. Remember how we started out looking south? That's the way I've got Stellarium set up now. Remember how we rotated the sky in the dome to bring north around to our field of view? Same deal here. You can rotate any direction you like. You can also do your click and drag with the left mouse button and look all the way up toward the zenith, the point directly overhead. That's like looking up at the top of the planetarium dome. Some other controls are pretty useful and important as well. Um, another really important control is zooming in and out of the sky. Now I'm using a mouse with a scroll wheel and that makes it really easy. I just scroll wheel up to zoom in and scroll wheel down to zoom out. So it's very easy to zoom in and when you do dimmer and dimmer stars become visible. When you scroll out those dim ones go away to keep it from being too crowded. So we've got panning with the left mouse button, zooming in and out with scroll wheel, and then another really useful thing is to be able to make time move forward at different speeds. You remember I was doing that in the planetarium on Thursday, where we would speed up time so that we could see motion in the sky. And we talked about the idea that it's the rotation of the Earth that causes this, rather than the stars actually moving around us. To do that, it's fairly simple. Let me show you how to do that with the toolbar. You can see down at the bottom of the screen, there's some sort of toolbar down here. And in the, the right-hand end of the toolbar, we've got these time displays here. The date says 2010-1-8, that's January 8th. And then here it shows the time that we're simulating. The 21 means 9 o'clock, just subtract 12 hours, and that'll give you 9 o'clock because that's in 24-hour time. And then we have 22 minutes past the hour, and here are the seconds ticking by. So time is going at a normal rate here. If I want to speed up time, I can just click on this button. Also notice that to the left it says increase time speed L. A real simple way to make time go faster without going down here is just to push the L key. I pushed it once and if you look at the time display you can see that time seems to be moving faster. I can push it a couple more times and now the fast forwarding of time is a lot more apparent. If I push K it looks like it's frozen things. In fact, what it's done is take time back to a normal speed. You can see it's just ticking along. That's this button here, set normal time rate K. You can also push this thing and it'll give you set time to now. So when you do that, it gives you the current time that's on your computer. I happen to be making this podcast a little bit after one in the afternoon. 
that's 1302. So the sun is up and we can't see the stars. If you want to make it nighttime and see the nighttime sky, there are a couple things you can do. You could hit L a few times and run time forward. Or you could come over here and pop out this left toolbar and do date time window. This is actually the time we were using a minute ago, so if I change this just by one minute, it'll pop us into nighttime. So I can change the time however I want. I can change year, month, day, everything down to the second. I could make it 8 o'clock at night. That's 20 hours. I could make it 9 o'clock at night, 21 hours, and so on. So here I've got the ability to change what time it is. And any time you want to go to night, just make it somewhere around 21, 22, 23, or you could even go to midnight. That's zero. So that's how we can change time. Those are the basic controls of Stellarium. We've got panning, zooming, we've got change in time speed, and I think that's all we'll cover right now in this first video. I'll let you download and play around with Stellarium a bit, and in the next video, I'll get into some more advanced controls.